What's going on guys, your boy Sam from Team Sam Rex one here. Before I showcase you guys this awesome top eight YCS Mexico deck profile for my boy Asala, I just wanna ask you guys a couple questions when it comes to pro players deck profiles. I understand that a lot of you guys love players like Jesse Cotton and you guys love it when these pro players come on the channel and explain to you guys their insight behind certain cards, the ratios that they play, their entire mindset when it comes to deck building and just competitive play in Yu-Gi-Oh overall. So I wanna know if you guys are interested and see something like this in the future, especially in deck profiles that I showcase you guys at YCS. Is there any specific players that you guys want me to interview? Is there players in the future that you guys want me to talk to? And I consider Asala to be one of the great players here in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. I feel like a lot of you guys who are trying to get into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh can learn a lot from him. You know, same thing goes for Jesse Khan and also Aaron Furman as well. You know, and there's obviously other names out there. I'm wasting any more of your time. Without further ado, I'm gonna pass it right to Asala for this top eight YCS Mexico deck profile. Let's do it. Alright, we got Asala here after another loss in Top Cut. You know how it goes, you know how it goes. How are you feeling right now, Asala? Uh, well, not good anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, I got Top 8 at YCS, uh, where, where were we? Got Guadalajara? Guadalajara? Yeah, <laughs> Guadalajara, Guadalajara. Guadalajara. Anyway, anyway uh, I played a Solomon Great. <laughs> Uh, the one time for the one time. Yeah, we talked hella shit on this deck, but uh, it's, it's it's good now because there's a rock. <laughs> but uh, so <laughs> it's good now because everything else kind of sucks. Yeah, because th nothing can go that deep. So this deck is actually very good against like the fair decks because it just has some of the best grind game because your resources don't actually go anywhere. They're just all in the grave to keep coming back every turn. Uh, so obviously the one you sell, crazy that that card was at three at some point, but uh, and it didn't matter. Uh, three foxy, three spinny. Uh, Two Jaguar, one Falco, and one Fowl. These are like level fours. Could you say this thing for me again? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, like I wanted to play two Jaguar because often it does get Shark Cannon. There's a lot of DD Crows out right now, and I also just play Desire. So you want to have access to it. If you draw it, it's really good because you want to be able to combo it with either Buffalo or the Foxy. It's just, it's like not ever bad to draw it. It's just like when you only have level fours is when your hands are like actually bad, and that's why you don't want to like play anymore. So that's all the salad cards and, and the buffalo. Uh, two C archivers is like the best extender right now, I think. That's like a not a salad. Where I mean, it's better than backup secretary just because it chain blocks, which is like super huge. Uh, you make sure your gazelles resolve and blocks against like crescendo and roar, and it's just so free because like with this and spinny, just like having two spinnies that you can use each turn, like recycle your uh, stallios. Uh, hand traps now. Three ash. Three Phantasmae and three Nibiru. So this is the like one of the differences from Jesse's list from last week. Uh, I decided to just main three because Orcus got more popular. And yeah, like a lot of the time this can't resolve if they can just do the Azathoth play. But like when their hand is just slightly awkward, they just don't have regular combo and they just have a combo that works half the time. This card becomes insane. It's usually just a blowout every time. It's also just really good in the mirror. Uh, and then as for these, these are just like the hand traps that keep you in the game and Ash is like specifically good in this deck because like you can recycle all the time and like I wouldn't really play Ash in most other decks because it's like kind of low impact but because you can just use it every turn, it's really good in this deck. Uh, that's all the monsters. Uh, spells, Sanctuary, Circle. Uh, I think like the biggest thing that you have to do with this deck now is 3 will just because it's just this makes your grind game insane, it lets you play around Nibiru. Huh? 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 Nothing? <laughs> I agree. Okay. Well, yeah. Like, <laughs> three will, because this is just like your actual best card in the deck at this point, right. other than Gazelle, because you can actually, you can, it keeps you in the game forever. You play around Nibiru, and uh, there's just, against Striker, they're forced to out it, and they have to play so right. awkwardly to out it, and if you just have another one, it's just so funny. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, Striker sucks. Yeah, stri apparently, yeah. It got second still. Uh, three mining. Uh, yeah, I don't think I need to find it. Uh, you're supposed to hold this a lot of the time if you can. Like, if you don't need it to start your play, you just kind of hold it until you, you can get Gazelle after, like, you're past your Nibiru point. Uh, two Desires. This is still, like, really good because you want to just be able to either start your combo and then, like, just draw your traps and hand traps after. Or just, like, uh, if you're not opening combo, then you might as well just try to see your pieces if you banish Gazelle or you banish Sanctuary or, like, even your Jaguars. Sometimes, like, it, it can suck, but you're still just playing more likely than you were without it. 
and I have won a lot of games with Banshee, both Jaguar and Sanctuary. I mean, uh, Gazelle and Sanctuary it happens a lot. But yeah. Uh, another thing that's different from Jesse's list, I just made three econ this time because uh, uh, drawing the traps, as we found out, just kind of breaks you a lot more going second. Even though they're all really good with like Foxy and just being able to break your bo break boards, this card is just really, really good at both going first and second, and I just really wanted to play it third. And it, w it was really good all weekend. And then, yeah, just to show off, uh, show the difference from just this again. So we cut a Rage uh, to add a Nikon, and then I just played a 41st card in the third Nibiru. But yeah, these are the trap lineups. And I just wanted, I didn't go just one and one because I really liked being able to draw them and then like having them for Foxy or just like free discards for mining and stuff. And like I, with Desires, I really didn't want to just banish both. It also just helped because you often side out like one of them. And I don't like want to have to side out other things. Uh, that's it for the main deck. Uh, extra deck. This is like this pretty standard. Uh, three Bay Links, three Drag, uh, three Wolf, two. You know, I, I barely started learning what these cards are. Everything's <laughs> uh, so, uh, Stalio, Dweller, those are the only exceeds we play. And then, like, we're still doing these guys because this actually just cleans up most of the matches. Like, the reason we can get away with playing only one Stalio is because you play the update jammer Borload. So, like, this is usually you're out for most monsters, and if you catch yourself a little back, you can usually just do this. So, like, you're either just killing them or you're gaining a, a lot of advantage by breaking their board with this. And it was really good. Uh, and then just a Phoenix, because you have to, and then Hida, because oh, you really have to. This card's really good. Uh, like, Phoenix isn't that good. Side deck, this is another big difference we played. I, I, I played three Gnome. Uh, because the Lunar Light deck got really popular, and also just pretty good against like all versions of Orcus, except for like the, the pure version like that doesn't like, actually summon Mermaid. But yeah, like if they're gonna do the Nyarla play, you do this on Nyarla, they just pass, they, they lose automatically, it feels like, that you can do it on like whatever Nightmare they use before they uh, summon Mermaid. Uh, against Cyber Dragon, you can hit it on the Nova, and they're like, uh, they're forced to just do basic Orcus combo with the Nova out, and because you're siding this in, you automatically break the board. So, yeah. Uh, two mind control. You don't. I. I mean, I kind of want to play a third, but having like two of this and uh, I mean three of this and three econ is overkill. And often, like this kind of just swaps out with the econ in a lot of matchups, just because you don't want to give up cards going second. Uh, but there's certain matchups econ is better anyway. Uh, and then the common stuff. You gotta play three twin. This just hasn't changed. Uh, Cyclone is really good right now, but there's a lot of discard fodder in this deck, and twin is just really solid. Uh, three shared ride. I wasn't sure if I was gonna play this t uh, this weekend but because I thought there would be some striker, but like not nearly as many as is usual for here. Uh, but I did not regret it. It was just so good every time it resolved. So and, like there were games where like I completely bricked on this card, but because of how like high impact the card was when I activated it, it automatically won me the game, which is weird. But yeah, that striker sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then three imps. This is also just another hand trap that can play through uh, the eyes of thought thing. Like you still hit their mermaid and they're like cuts them off from like the curious play or whatever. Uh, it's also just like a solid hand trap to like go first with, or if you draw it as a six card, it's still really playable. I think it was like the main reasons why to play this card over other hand traps right now. Especially like it can, you can afford it to be low impact because you play so many hand traps in this deck. Uh, but yeah, there's like not much to explain, uh, explain just cause it's salad, like, there's nothing special about it. It's like the weakest sauce we've ever used, it's just water. But um, anyway, uh, I guess- Is there anything you would want to change about the deck? Not really. I feel like a lot of the times, if I lose with this deck, there's just something I could have done differently. So I don't think there's anything I actually wanted to change from this list. But like, it'll update itself for like however the meta shifts. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that, I think the deck was really good. I, uh, I lost in top eight to the eventual champion because of a bad judgment call in game one and then completely breaking game, three, uh, game two. But yeah, other, other than that, the deck was really, really good. Uh, so just shout out, shout out to Game Nation, shout out to um, everyone back home, shout out to the people at Frank's, uh, SSA, uh, Anthony, BC, Tim, uh, Project CCG. Uh, use promo code DGZBOMBS5 at YGOMarket.com to get 5% off your order. And uh, that's it. Right. You're welcome. Go on, let's go.